Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Monday mini episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. If you listened to last Monday's episode, you would have heard part one of my nature story. I often like to start my interviews with my guests asking them how nature has influenced their lives and is important to them. As we're now over a month into this Nurtured by Nature podcast journey, I thought it would be a good time to share with you a little bit about how nature has influenced my own life. In last week's episode, I shared a lot more about my time in the UK growing up as a child and also how my horses have been my greatest teachers and influenced me into learning more about the healing properties of plants and essential oils, exploring energy medicine such as Reiki and osteojuice and my studies of flower essences. I'm an Australian bush flower essence advanced practitioner. So really last week's episode was had more of a focus of how nature can nurture us how our relationship with nature can support our own well-being. So in this week's episode, I'll be exploring more about how we can in turn nurture nature as I feel both go hand in hand, but this is equally as important and has also been a significant part of my experience with nature. So I mentioned my love of Africa as well has carried on and eventually just after leaving school I worked quite hard saving money and eventually managed to earn enough to fulfill my dream of visiting Africa. I headed to South Africa and a small town on the edge of the Kruger National Park and was involved in a volunteer uh, conservation program for a couple of months. When I arrived in Africa it literally just felt like I was coming home and I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Just the first time seeing an elephant in the wild was just, I don't know, there's, there's almost, it's, it's hard to, to actually find the words to describe seeing these huge, magnificent, imposing terrifying on many levels I mean I have the hugest respect for elephants um, having lived alongside them for several years they humble you in ways that it's hard to explain it was just like experiencing life on like completely different level like the you know, I, I know people say everything's like kind of bigger in Africa and it is like the assault on your senses is just incredible and it's just an amazing environment. It's a harsh and hard environment, but it's an incredible environment to have had the opportunity to live in for an extended period of time. Fortuitous circumstances saw the opportunity for me to become a co-manager of a game lodge in one of the private reserves adjacent to the Kruger National Park. I grabbed at this opportunity with both hands and jumped full in and I found myself at the age of 20 living really probably my, my childhood dream, you know, actually in the middle of a nature reserve, game reserve in Africa. It was an incredible experience living in the African wilderness for such an extended period of time. We had no fences around the camp. We probably couldn't have been more like ingrained into the environment if we tried. So we lived alongside all of the animals, the big animals, elephants, lions, leopards, and I have amazing memories of trying to cohabit with them, which wasn't always easy, but um, certainly makes for interesting t stories to share. But also the smaller things, the insects, the reptiles, 
we often had snakes in the roof and the birds the plants the trees the grasses it was just a complete privilege to be in that environment and living alongside these amazing species living there for multiple years experiencing how the environment the animals the birds the insects change through the seasons through the months through the days it was just an absolute honor and it gave me a very different perspective on nature than I had experienced before at that time in the early 2000s it was an exciting time to be based where I was I was lucky enough to see the fences between private landowners in the private reserves and also internationally between South Africa and Mozambique being dropped. It might seem small, but actually it was an incredible achievement to get these individual stakeholders to agree to a common goal for managing these vast tracts of land with the preservation of the environment and species at their heart. I was also lucky enough to be directly involved with a couple of conservation projects. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that one of my favourite species are the endangered African wild dogs or painted wolves. And whilst working at the game lodge in South Africa, the local landowners worked with the Endangered Wildlife Trust to relocate and reintroduce a pack of African wild dogs. And I was lucky enough to be part of the team that was involved with managing and monitoring them initially when they first arrived and they were in the boma, which is an African word for an enclosure, which allowed them a safe time to be monitored after the transportation, but also to bond as a pack because males and females had been brought in from different areas of South Africa. Then when they were released, we continued to monitor them closely. A couple of them had been fitted with telemetry tracking collars, so we would track them using their collars. And then after their release, they filled our lives with countless amazing antics um, from chasing impala into the lodge swimming pool and we were fortunate enough for them to den quite locally to the lodge that I was managing and having the opportunity to see the youngsters of these critically endangered carnivores coming out of the den and into the world was just a very humbling experience. I have so many incredible memories of my time living and working in Africa and Some of them are shared on my website if you would like to read more. I can't obviously go into all of them now. Um, It would take up far too much of your time. I was very lucky to live and work alongside several people who were incredibly passionate about the environment that we were living in in South Africa. And I learnt a huge amount from them. It was during those years that I learned a huge amount about the natural world as a whole and really fostered that interest. It also gave me a deep respect for Africa and the people that live there and work there and are involved in conservation. I think having come back to the UK, there's often a dialogue that Africa doesn't really do very well in conservation and I don't think that's really true. I think they've had some amazing conservation successes. But I've gone on since leaving my position managing the lodge to lead photographic safaris, to write articles highlighting conservation projects and challenges, and also to have travelled extensively throughout both southern and east Africa and even up into west Africa, um, from Ethiopia and Madagascar, Namibia, the deserts in Namibia, um, Botswana, Zokavango Delta. I, I was very fortunate to spend quite an extensive amount of time there alongside some wildlife film crews and then have also travelled up into Uganda, Rwanda, seen the 
amazing mountain gorillas. And alongside that, I continued my passion for photography. Um, obviously, in Africa, I had slightly more, perhaps one would say, exciting subjects in terms of the mega fauna and flora of Africa to photograph. Um, I've always been conscious to use my love and passion for wildlife photography and filmmaking in an effort to help raise awareness for the regions and species that I've been lucky enough to spend time in or alongside and to share my love of Africa with those who perhaps aren't fortunate enough to have the opportunity to visit or spend extended amounts of time there. I've always believed in giving back and I've always donated 20% of all my print sales to conservation projects that I've been lucky enough to see firsthand the amazing things that they are achieving. And I know that the money will be spent wisely and also have a tangible impact on those environments and those species. Because sometimes I think it that's a challenge is to know who to align yourself with that will ensure that actually your well-meaning donation actually does translate into support and action to conserve and protect what you hope it will. In 2016, I was in the UK and watching a documentary narrated by David Attenborough and it was about giraffe. And I'll be the first to admit, at that time, I had no idea that giraffe were endangered and at threat of extinction. The documentary focused on the incredible work of the Giraffe Conservation Foundation and its co-founders, Steph and Julian Fennessy. I was so blown away by the passion the Fennessys had for giraffe and everything that they were achieving that I reached out to them to ask if there was any way that I could assist them. I was lucky enough to find myself in Uganda with Julian helping to conduct a population survey of the critically endangered Nubian giraffe in Kadepo National Park. And then two years later, I joined Julian again in Chad alongside the African Parks Network in Zakuma National Park on the edge of the Sahara Desert where we were collaring critically endangered quarterfan giraffe. Both Nubian and quarterfan giraffe are subspecies of the northern giraffe and their numbers are critically low. There are only a few thousand of each of the subspecies left in the entire world. For the past four years, I've gone on and worked as the social media and online marketing strategist for the Giraffe Conservation Foundation. And it's been my absolute pleasure to support this small, dynamic and hugely resourceful team that are making phenomenal strides in giving giraffe a much brighter future right across their range throughout Africa. And it's reminded me how passionate individuals can make a difference, but also that by partnering and working with others, you can have an even greater impact. I'm now back based in the UK, and whilst a large part of my heart still lies in Africa, I've also become more and more interested in conservation and what I can do closer to home. I spent time learning about biological recording at the incredible net rewilding project in Sussex alongside their ecologist and realised the importance of citizen science projects, which is an earlier episode I shared, and how we can all play a role in conservation by helping provide information to researchers and charities that are out there already working to protect species and habitats, but are extra eyes and ears on the ground can help them gather more information to shape their policies for the future and know where to invest more time and focus. So I would highly encourage everyone wherever you are in the world to look for any opportunities to help record the wildlife, the plants, the insects on your local patch and submit these to charities that are looking for that information. 
in both the UK and Africa, I've always found myself living in rural communities and in the UK that has the farming element. So that's another side of things that I'm interested in is how our food production and farming impacts the environment and the ways that are being adapted by organic farming, regenerative farming and the rewilding projects to help nature find a space alongside our human need for food and food production. I still love my photography and filmmaking and be a finalist and win various awards for my photography and short films that help to raise awareness and help others to fall in love with these amazing animals and plants that surround us. In more recent years I've explored digital art, a way to encompass my own photography but to produce a more personal expression of my relationship with nature beyond film and photography. And I continue to support conservation through the sale of those prints. I believe as artists and creatives, we're also uniquely placed to consider art as a form of activism and how we can contribute to the causes that we're passionate about. In recent years, I was fortunate enough to work with Aviva Romani and learn more about her trigger point theory a complex adaptive model studying relationships between agents in big data systems and how we can use our creative and aesthetic skills to lead to new knowledge about these relationships beyond necessarily strictly statistical information. I found learning from Aviva fascinating, a different way of looking at both art and information and how art can also be a form of activism and help not just purely raise awareness but actually provide solutions to critical problems. And one of my favourite takeaways from my time with her was that paradox of time, that despite urgency, there is time to change. And that's something that I hang on to and I believe that although we have much that needs to change. We do have time if we begin now. And so my journey has brought me now, starting a podcast, an opportunity for me to hopefully inspire you, my listeners, with ways that you can explore and deepen your own connection with nature and find ways that you can nurture yourselves and also nurture nature, but also an opportunity for me to highlight some of the incredible individuals that are out there, whether they are often just normal everyday people like you and I, or sometimes those that have gone above and beyond and started amazing movements, charities, foundations, and have had an effect that ripples out beyond just their local area. But I find that both are equally important. Doing a little bit close to home can have as much of a ripple effect as those that take on the bigger challenges and work in much larger areas. So I hope that during the course of this journey, I will provide a space for them to share their stories and also a place where you will find inspiration of how you can get involved, things that you can do and organisations that you can support because I believe together we can make a difference and that there is still hope for our relationship with the natural world and the future of our environment. So with that message in my heart, I hope you'll continue to join me on this journey as we see how it will unfold and where it will take us all. I hope you have a lovely week. I won't actually be with you with a guest on Friday, so there's an opportunity for you to catch up with some of the previous episodes that I've shared and we'll be back next week with a Monday mini episode and then another exciting guest for you to listen to on Friday. Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode.
I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.